So in the Bose-Einstein problem, uh, we want to calculate the number of ways to distribute k particles, thinking of these particles as indistinguishable objects into n different cells. Okay. So when you're thinking of a problem like this, again, it's good to start with a concrete example with small numbers to sort of develop some intuition for what's going on and then move from there. And since I don't like particles and cells so much, let's think of uh, children and cookies instead. So, so let's suppose that instead we had six cookies which we wanted to distribute amongst three children. So think of the cookies as the particles, the children as the cells. So if I draw out my six cookies, then I could tell you, uh, so if I want to tell you, you know, one possible way of distributing these six cookies to three children, I would tell you how many cookies does the first child get, how many does the second get, how many does the third get, right? And I could do that by drawing lines in this diagram which, which, which delineate the, the number of cookies the first child got from the ones that the second from the ones that the third got. So for example, if I wanted to say that the first child got one cookie, I could put a bar after the first cookie. So this would be the first child's cookies. And then suppose the second child now gets four cookies. Then I'd put a second bar there. But as soon as I put that second bar down, that automatically tells you how many the third child gets. So two bars is enough to kind of to specify how many cookies each child gets, right? Another possibility might be that the first child gets two cookies, the second child gets no cookies, and then the last child gets the remaining four. Okay. So two bars in a row would represent an outcome where one of the children gets zero cookies. Right? So if you think about now, the number of ways to distribute six cookies amongst three children is really just the number of ways to redistribute these eight objects amongst themselves except that all the cookies need to be indistinguishable, and so do all the bars, right? So if, I, if, if they weren't indistinguishable, if I just had eight objects and I wanted to know the number of ways to distribute them amongst themselves, it would be eight factorial. Now, to take into account the fact that some items are indistinguishable, we need to divide by the number of possible ways to rearrange indistinguishable items amongst themselves. So for example, in this first outcome here, if I switch this cookie and this cookie, right, or if I switch these two cookies, that corresponding outcome should, is the same. You know, children, child one still gets one cookie, child two still gets four, and child one still gets one. Child three still gets one. So the number of ways to, dis, to, to flop the six cookies without changing the bar cookie uh, order is six factorial because there's six cookies. Similarly, the number of ways to rearrange the bars, like for example here I could flip these two, is going to be 2 factorial. Okay. So if you think about how we argued this, in general, if I have k particles and n cells, then where did we get the numerator? Well first, we lined up all k cells and I needed to lay out n minus 1 distributors, right? Just like here we needed to lay out two distributors to specify the outcomes for three children. Okay. So that factorial. And then we needed to divide by the n minus 1 factorial times the k factorial. And if you look at what this formula is giving us, it ends up just being n plus k minus 1 choose k. Okay. 